Hey guys, this is Kevin, and let's take a look at configuring TypeRocket. To configure TypeRocket, we'll just head over to the documentation on the configuration side and take a look at a few things, and then we'll just dump, jump into the code. So basically, all of your config is going to live in a config folder within the TypeRocket library pro part of your project. And then also, you'll have access to disable and enable plugins. We'll look at that. You'll be able to turn on debug mode, which will be really handy when it's time to do some templating and some design work. Some class overrides, like if we wanted to use different classes for, say, the forms or icons, that kind of thing. We'll look at that later on. Some features, for example, you can turn off and on Gutenberg. You don't need the classic plugin, for example. When you're using TypeRocket, you can just enable it there. Maybe you don't want the posts menu to show up. Maybe you don't want people to use the blogging mechanism of WordPress, maybe you just want pages, and then comments can be disabled and enabled from here as well. Some common things that you might be doing. And then other than that, you have basic path configuration, which we will look at. We've already looked at this with the MU plugin installation, where we had to change the URLs where the assets like the JavaScript and CSS live for TypeRocket. And then the root installation, Basically, some of this is just examples of what it would look like when you do the root installation. So if you did a root installation, your URLs config would look something like this. So let's go ahead and dive into some of the features that get added because of configuration, and we'll, we'll play with those, okay? So this is an MU installation of TypeRocket. If I go over to Installed Plugins, We'll see that we're using the must use plugin. Doesn't really matter how you have TypeRocket installed, this configuration will still apply to you. And there are some features out of the box that come with TypeRocket, and we may or may not want these. And this is where we get into configuring TypeRocket. So, for example, we have this dev plugin that adds this dev section here. We have theme options, which get added through a theme options plugin under the pages. If I edit a page, for example, I'll have the Gutenberg editor, um, but when we move into not having Gutenberg, you'll see there's a page builder we can that comes with TypeRocket. We can also disable that. We've got some search engine optimization going on here. This is a plugin added by TypeRocket. So some of these things we may not want in our project, and we don't need that code running every request. So let's look at getting those removed. And so here we are inside of TypeRocket. This is the app config. So under MU plugins, this is where I have TypeRocket installed. I'm looking for that config folder we talked about earlier. And then under app, this is where all the basic kind of stuff lives. So let's look at disabling some plugins, that SEO plugin. I'm just gonna comment that out and save this. Jump back over to the page here, refresh. And now you'll notice that that meta box for SEO is gone. So that's quite handy. And then I could do the same for the dev and theme options. We'll get rid of those, refresh the page. And you'll note that that dev icon down here is gone. Under appearance, there is no more theme options. Turn those back on. Just gonna walk through this real quickly. Gutenberg, maybe we don't want Gutenberg. Turn that to false. Refresh this page. And now Gutenberg's gone, and we're left with the TypeRocket page builder, which is here. I can hit Add New, Add a Component, and here the PowerPoint type uh, page builder is loaded in. Okay. Maybe we don't want those posts, so I'll turn that to false. Okay, save that. This will go away. Refresh the page. No more posts. You can't add new posts. So that's great. Maybe we don't want comments. Just turn that off. Save that. Now comments here will go away. This here will go away. And it looks like that's it. Refresh the page. Comments are now gone. No more comments section, which is great. So I've really cleaned up how I want to use WordPress. And I don't feel like I need to install that classic plugin, which is great. If I want debug mode turned on, well, what does this do? Well, WP debug, it looks for WP debug. And if that's not there, then we turn on uh, TypeRocket debug mode. 
So I'm going to go into my wp-config file, if I can find it here, and then find the wp-debug, turn that to true, and now we'll have debug mode turned on. Refresh the page, and you'll notice nothing really happens here. Um, and that's because we would need some custom fields to kind of see how that works, which we'll look at that later, but that's where debug mode is located. And we can turn that, I'm just going to leave that on actually. So for future videos, we'll already have that enabled. Um, I recommend turning that on, and then whenever you go into production, just make sure it's turned off. Um, the classes, we'll look at this stuff later. And then we're not using a root installation. If you are using a root installation, this will be set to true. And um, essentially it will look at this templates inside the themes directory for the root installation as the active install, okay? Then our assets URL, if we update the type rocket assets, we can change this number in order to kind of bust the caches for that if we're having issues with caching for like CSS and JavaScript, okay? Then the next section here is paths. Again, we set this up to be an MU plugin. You would configure that to your own liking. Uh, the base would be the type rocket path. The type rocket path is this main directory here. So type rocket path is equal to whatever this folder is and wherever its location is, that's going to be it. So for example, if we want to look up resources via of our configuration slash resources tr path, that's this folder. If I wanted to move this anywhere else, I can move it anywhere within the project. I could even move it outside of this complete WordPress installation. Maybe I wanted to reuse that as part of multiple different uh, type rocket and WordPress installations. I could do that and share resources that way. The same goes for views. Uh, pages are views that are used within the admin. So views are for the front end, pages are for the back end. We'll look at that later. Visuals are for components. Um, components are for essentially when we create those page builder components here. When I want to add one, these custom fields are loaded in through components. So that's what that is. Plugins. This is where um, non class based plugins go. This is um, an older feature, so we won't be looking at that, uh, but it's there for backwards compatibility. And then our app folder, this is where all of our custom classes go. So if I'm here, type rocket, app, I'll see my controllers, my middleware, my models, all that good stuff is in here. And then themes. So this is where our themes directory would be located. So if I, under here, if I'm using a root installation, I didn't want my themes folder to be under resources. Maybe I wanted it to be under that main directory or somewhere else. I can change that here. And then migrations. If you're going to run migrations, and we'll look at that in a second, um, this is where you would load your migrations from. And you could set multiple folders to pull in migrations. Now, that's kind of the configuration for Type Rocket on the front end, but we also have configuration for, for the Galaxy CLI. And there are some things that are pretty interesting here that are worth noting. First, WordPress integration is not enabled by default. And that's because depending on how you have WordPress installed, it could create some errors. And I'd rather you have some features available versus no features available if you didn't configure this. But we'll look at how to configure this in this just a second. And then the other piece here is if you wanted to add your own custom commands to the CLI, you could do so here. Um, but yeah, let's look at getting these WordPress commands enabled. Now the first thing to note here is if I open up my terminal within this project, I'm in the WordPress directory, I can't run PHP Galaxy here. This is a type rocket CLI command, so I have to be where type rocket is. WP content and then MU plugins and then go into the type rocket directory, okay? Then I can run that PHP Galaxy and we'll see all these commands that come with type rocket. Now Note there's a limited set of commands here. There's nothing that really works with WordPress. So let's turn on WordPress integration, okay? So I want to change the path to the type rocket path slash WordPress. And this would be what you would set it to if you had a root installation. However, we have an MU installation. So we're going to need to tell type rocket with from here where this basic path is here, 
where we need to get to to get to this base base WordPress install. So I'm going to do type rocket path. Go back a few directories, okay? So that would be outside of type rocket into the MU folder. From the MU folder back uh, to the WordPress root, and that should be it. So again, we're going from here to here to here to here. So that looks like it's about four steps. Let's see. Type rocket then MU folder, WP content, and then the WordPress folder. So that should be what we need to get that working. And we should be good to go there. So if I run uh, PHP Galaxy, we should get an error and say we can't connect to um, MySQL. And we'll look at all these errors here. So it can't connect to MySQL. That's because I'm using a guest host virtual machine environment for my setup. Uh, MySQL does not set up locally on my machine. So when I connect to localhost, it's not finding that connection. I need to set this up to where it will work with a CLI if I'm using it locally on this computer and locally if I'm on my guest machine and then also if it's working on the website here. So I'm using port forwarding with Homestead on this. So I'm going to go over here to Galaxy CLI and over here WP com commands. Um, we have that there. So we're, we've just looked at this part. And what I really want to do is accessing the CLI from a guest machine. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. And this is specific to Homestead. Okay. So instead of having localhost here from a BDB host, I'm just going to change this. Okay, so then if I'm using the CLI and it's not on the host of my host machine or guest machine essentially, which is Homestead, then it's going to use localhost. Otherwise, it's going to use uh, port forwarding here. So now when I go to terminal, I'm going to clear this out. And if I run PHP Galaxy, we'll now see I have some WordPress commands, WP flush to flush the permalink. So I don't have to go to the admin every time I want to do that. Um, WPSQL, database SQL script, that'll let me run some scripts. I can publish plugins. I can also make migrations. And if we look up here, we should see migrate. So we can run those migrations. And again, that's what we were talking about earlier when we were talking about the Galaxy command, these paths, and then also having these migrations at the bottom. And this is all you really need to know to get TypeRocket configured and working on your machine with the base features that we care about. From there, it's really up to you what you want to do based on the project requirements that you have.